Uh, Titus chapter number 2, we'll begin our reading, verse number 11. Uh, I said all of that, I said because of the language the Apostle Paul was inspired to write. This is just encouraging, encouraging words. Look what he says, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We want to thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for the good singing, the good testimonies. Thank you for answering prayer. Lord, I'm glad that little preemie baby's home and doing well. Lord, you're just a great God, and we bless you for all your choice blessings. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you would uh, certainly bless our feeble efforts. I pray for those that are working with the children on the other side, you would bless them and help them to be an encouragement and uh, certainly a, a stronghold in the eyes of those children. I pray those children would be taught the Bible, and Lord, when they reach the age of accountability, they get saved at a young age. And Father, I pray that those that have been saved would grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I pray for those that are working with the teens, that God, you'd bless them. And God, I pray for our teens, our young people, all the peer pressure that they face. And God, I pray you'd insulate them and you would undergird them in truth. And God, I pray you'd help them. These here in the sanctuary tonight, I pray that you would move and meet every need of every heart. I do pray, uh, Father, for Brother Tommy's brother. Lord, that all would be well, and I pray you'd get born again. I pray for Brother Brian, whose neck's acting up again, and God, I pray you'd just touch him and help him, and Lord, we're thankful he's here, and God, I pray you'd bless him for being so. And then, Father, I do pray for uh, the Longworth family to help them as they have COVID, and God, I pray for others that are sick and others that are struggling and those that are in need. God, you'd move in helping those. Now, Father, just help us tonight. Sit down amongst us, uh, enlighten our minds, challenge our hearts. Uh, God, I pray for that one that may be bruised tonight, that you'd give a balm of Gilead to them. That one that may be seeking, that they would find. I pray if there's any amongst us who are unsaved, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. Uh, Father, I pray for that one that's struggling, you'd strengthen them. God, just move and touch hearts, and we'll thank you for what you do. For it's in the holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. There's so much in these verses that we could bring out, uh, but I just want to give you a couple little simple points as a way of introduction. I want you to notice in verse number 11 that salvation appeared. Look what it says. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to some men. Is that what it says? To all men. Amen. Can I say that the Bible says that and God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, Jesus tasted death for all men, and salvation hath appeared unto all men. God is no respecter of persons, uh, and God wants to save everybody. Jesus came seeking to save uh, that which was lost. Uh, uh, the only uh, uh, qualification for getting saved is to realize you're lost. Uh, and if you know you're lost, uh, I got good news, God will save you. Uh, uh, what a blessing. We see that salvation appeared. Uh, we just uh, come through the Christmas season and we like to read the Christmas story and how the angels appeared unto the shepherds and told them that the Savior was born, uh, which was Christ the Lord. Uh, and just as he came into that world that night, uh, he came for one reason, uh, to bring salvation to sinful man. Uh, and I'm glad, hallelujah, God's in the saving business. Amen. We see salvation appear. I want you to notice, if you will, sympathy appeared. Look in chapter number 3. Look in verse number 4. The Bible says this, but after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, 
But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, can I say, not only did salvation appear, uh, sympathy appeared. In verse 4 it said, the kindness uh, and love of God uh, appeared. Uh, aren't you glad, hallelujah, that God looked at us not in uh, disdain, not in disgust, uh, but he looked at us in pity and love uh, and through tender mercy and through loving kindness uh, and through a loving heart of a loving God. Uh, he uh, appeared unto us uh, and he brought salvation uh, and he allowed us to have the faculties to know that we could be saved. Uh, and then he saved us, hallelujah, with the washing of, of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, what a blessing to be saved tonight. We see salvation appeared. We see sympathy appeared. But hallelujah, one of these days, uh, the Savior's going to appear. Look at verse 13 of chapter 2. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Hallelujah. Uh, the real thing is, are you looking for Him? Uh, it said looking for that blessed hope. If you're looking for His appearing, guess what? You're blessed. You've got a blessed hope. Uh, too many people got hopes and things that aren't uh, 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 going to come to fruition. Uh, 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 they're temporal things. Uh, uh, but I've got good news. If you're saved uh, and if you're looking for Him, your life will be blessed and you'll have hope. And I'm glad I've got hope. Hmm? I have hope, and it's not in the Pope, and I don't need dope. What a blessing, huh? Got hope tonight. Uh, so we see those three appearings in, in, in just these few verses, but I'm interested in verse number 11. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. I want to preach for just a few minutes on God's amazing grace. Now listen, uh, there's two things that are hard for me to preach on. Uh, grace and love. The grace of God, you can never put in, you, you can't bring it down and, and say enough about it. It's just so tremendous and so beyond our scope of thinking. Uh, you can't uh, 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 really do it justice. And then uh, uh, to make things worse, you got the love of God. How do you explain the love of God? Hmm? I love that old hymn, The Love of God. And the wording of that hymn, uh, that if the ocean was ink, you'd drain it dry and you still couldn't pin. If the, uh, the sky was parchment, there wouldn't be enough uh, uh, room to print all the accolades about the love of God. Uh, but I want to give you just four simple thoughts on God's amazing grace. Can I say something about God's amazing grace? There's divine grace for our liberating. Again in verse number 11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. You know, you and I can be gracious. But this is talking about the grace of God. It is divine grace, and it is liberating. You see, when we were lost in sin, we were bound by sin. We were chained by sin. We were controlled by sin. Uh, you was born in, into sin. Uh, you was born a sinner. Uh, in your sin, you like sinning. Uh, I got news for you. Uh, this flesh, even though you may be saved tonight, your flesh still likes sin. There's just something about sin. Uh, 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 and that sin, uh, when you're not saved, it controls you. And uh, it has you bound. Uh, and the worst thing, Brother Phil, that sin that has you bound will drag you off into hell. Uh, but because of the divine, amazing grace of God, uh, God made a way we could be liberated from our sin. Uh, 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 grace, uh, uh, one writer said, there's an acronym for grace. It says, uh, God's riches uh, at Christ's expense. Expense. Uh, we get all the riches and all the blessings of heaven because of what Christ paid for uh, when he went to Calvary and shed his blood uh, became the propitiation uh, or the mercy seat for our sin. Uh, he was your sacrifice and my sacrifice. Uh, he led his perfect life, went to Calvary, died, uh, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures uh, for one reason and that was to break the chains of your mind sin. The divine grace of God liberated us from our sin. Uh, there wasn't no hope for you, Bob. 
you was a sinner and you was a Gentile, you lost out twice. But by the grace of God, He made a way where even General Lee could get in. Hmm? Isn't that a blessing? And the divine grace was given for our liberating. I, I really fret over these folks that believe they can earn their way to heaven. Hmm? If you could earn your way or work your way, why would we need the grace of God? Why would Jesus have to die on the cross? You and I, we can't, we can't, even, we can't even earn our way out of, out of a mess most of the time. But God, through His divine grace, knew what we needed. Isn't it amazing? He knew what it'd take to save you. He knew what garbage dump you was in. And the grace of God let him down there so he could liberate you. He knew what mess you was in. Came to where you was. What mess you was in. What mess you was in. What mess you... What mess we was all in. Now some people weren't in the garbage dump. They was on a church pew, but they still lost. Still on their way to hell. Still bound by sin. But the divine grace of God liberated you. You know why we ought to be excited about being saved? Because we're not bound by sin. If the Son has set you free, you're free indeed. I'm no longer bound by sin. Hmm? I still need constraints in my life. That's why I have the Holy Ghost. There are some people who believe once you're saved, you can live however you want to. That's not Bible. Mm -mm. Uh, the Bible says the love of Christ constraineth me. There are some things that God puts in my life to keep me from going off unchecked. So we find the divine gra there's divine grace for our liberating. Can I say, secondly, there's discerning grace for our learning. Look in uh, chapter 12. Look what the Bible says. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Can I help you something? When Paul wrote that some 2,000 years ago, he said, in this present world. Can I say it's still up to date today? The grace of God can teach us uh, how to deny ourselves and how to live godly and soberly in this present world. It was divine grace that was given for our liberating, but discerning grace given for our learning. You know why you're able to learn the way you, you've learned the Bible, and you know why God speaks to you and God shows you things? Because of the Spirit of God living in you through the divine grace of God, He's given you discerning grace. Hmm? One old adage is, your conscience is your guide. You better be careful, your conscience might lead you astray. But when you got saved, you got a new nature, and there's somebody living inside of you. And the Lord Jesus said Himself, speaking of the Comforter that would come, He said, He will lead you and guide you into all truth. There is discerning grace for our learning. Now here's the problem. Who have I picked on all day? I didn't pick on well, I did pick on you about the tie, but I'm gonna pick on you again. Here's the problem. You ready for the problem? Some people don't want the responsibility of learning. They want to be told what to do all the time. They want the preacher to tell them what to do. They want the deacons approve on what to do. They want somebody else to tell them what to do because they're lazy. See, the more you walk in the Spirit, the more the Spirit speaks to you, and, and the more you discern how He wants you to live according to the Scriptures. See, if you're waiting on somebody to tell you what to do, you don't need to read the Bible. But see, when you start reading the Bible, the Holy Spirit will start teaching you some things and how to act and how to live, how to wear a tie. I promise you there'd be no ties in heaven, huh? But there are folks that they're lazy. Do you realize you're going to be judged and given account of yourself to God? That's why you better learn to listen to the Holy Spirit as you're reading the Scriptures because He'll lead you and He'll teach you and He'll show you things. Uh, there are times I talk about when you're reading the Bible and it just kind of turns into 3D and it pops off the page. There are people looking at me like, oh, I never had it happen to me like that. Well, get beyond the words and get in tune with the one who wrote the word down 
And you'll be amazed what he'll show you from his word. He gives us discerning grace for our learning, divine grace for our liberating, but he also gives us daily grace for our living. Hmm? You know, outside the grace of God, your life be a mess even in your daily walk. Huh? You know how many times God has spared you and how many times God has, has you know, kept things away from you just because you was living the way you're supposed to live? He gives you daily grace. Oh, the Christian life's hard. No, the Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. The Christian life's the easiest life you'll ever have. But you've got to learn to walk in the grace of God. Look what he said again about the grace of God and, and, and living uh, by the grace of God. He said again in verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Look at verse 14. It talks about the Lord who gave himself that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. You see, if you walk in the grace of God and you live by the grace of God and you walk in faith and you walk through the pages of the Bible, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb in this world. You're going to be a peculiar person. How many people look at you funny because uh, on New Year's Eve you didn't go to uh, some kind of crazy drunken party? I mean, that's the way the world thinks. But you don't think like the world. Uh, the world wants to uh, uh, live uh, 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 wickedly and the world wants to do all kinds of crazy things and they on your job want you to go do this with them and say no I don't do that I'm a Christian hmm? they don't understand that you're peculiar you don't talk like them you don't think like them you're not all scary, scared over all this COVID stuff like them. You're, you don't live in fear about them. Uh, you don't hang on every word Fauci says. I mean, you know, you're just, uh, uh, you're weird, man. You ought to be the first in line for the vaccine. You don't want to die, huh? Uh, me and Miss Amy is talking this morning. Don't threaten us with heaven. Uh, uh, where's my friend Michael Jackson? That is his real name, by the way. I just didn't make that up. I'm going to help you out. You're in good company. You know, today they voted on the Speaker of the House. Pelosi won by seven votes. Can you imagine that? Huh? But one of the newly elected Congresswomen from out west, one of them gun toters, she showed up today without a mask. It was, it was almost a free fall on the, on the House floor because she didn't have a mask. She said, I will not live in tyranny. Isn't that something? Huh? <laughs> We need to vote her in in Kentucky. Huh? I just give that to him because he needs some encouragement. He got cussed out for not wearing a mask. Uh, but see, God gives us daily grace for our living. And when you do live the Bible, you're going you're to be peculiar. When you live the Bible... You're going to live soberly. In other words, you, you, your mind's not clouded by the, by the philosophy of the world. You're going to live righteously. You're going to live right. You're going to do right. And you're going to honor your commitments. You're going to go to work and show up on time and do a good job. You're going to live right. Uh, uh, you're going to uh, be zealous of good works. When you live by the grace of God, guess what? You're going to do right, but you also are excited and be zealous towards the things of God. Can't wait for a revival meeting. Can't wait for camp meeting. Can't wait to get to church. Can't wait to sing in a choir. Can't wait to read my Bible. Can't wait to pray. Can't wait to tell somebody about Jesus. What is all that about? It's called grace. Remember when you was lost, you had no problem acting like a fool in this world. Well, how come we can't get excited about Jesus? And I thought about this. I told you I didn't have much, just a little thought. God's amazing grace. He gives us divine grace for our liber liberating. There's discerning grace for our learning. There's daily grace for our living. But there's also departing grace for our leaving. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. It gives us departing grace for our leaving. Most of us, 
and seeing the signs of the time and going through our studies that we've been doing on, on the end times on Wednesday nights, we realize the trumpet could blow. We can all go out here in the rapture at any time. Uh, and I prefer we do it that way. Uh, but you and I both know, as children of God, we go out different than this than a, than a unsaved person goes out. And if you go by the way of the grave, the Bible says to be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord. Uh, the Lord Jesus removed the sting of death. O oh, grave, where's thy victory? O oh, death, where's thy sting? There is no more sting of death. And he's removed that for the child of God. He has given us grace for our departure. And can I say, whether by the rapture or by the grave, it's all the same. In an instant, we'll be from here to there. Mm -hmm. He's given us grace for that. Uh, the old time Jews called it dying grace. Mm -hmm. Now, listen. Nobody signed up today, hey, I'm ready to go out of here. I mean, we're ready, but we're not ready. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Cinda was praying that even so come quickly, Lord Jesus, today. I don't know. But most people in their mind that are saved, we're ready to go. But we just aren't ready to go. The fleshly nature wants to hang on and fight for every last breath. The spiritual man's ready to go. But the fleshly nature will fight for everything it can to stay here. And that fleshly nature just says, well... Maybe don't want to go now. I mean, you didn't wake up today and say, I got a death wish, God, take me out. No. I mean, you're an x-ray man. You glow in the dark at night. If anybody ought to go, it ought to be you. Huh? Huh? How come you gotta put on how come you gotta put on all that heavy stuff? Do you still do that, you know, or you just hide behind the wall, you know? Hide behind the wall. I knew you was a coward. I know oh, I'm just teasing, Clint. But you see, even when it comes our time, God gives us dying grace. You ever been around a saint of God's about ready to cross over? Everybody in the room's tore up but them. And God says, give them grace. I had a book on the deaths of sin, sin, saints and sinners. And the testimony of saints going out versus the testimony of sinners going out, infidels going out, there's a grave difference, friend. Say, so what, what's the difference, grace? Hmm? If God's got grace enough to save you, God's got grace enough for you to live by daily, if God's got grace enough to deliver you from any problem you've got, I promise you He's got grace enough for you to cross over. It'll be all right. You know why? You didn't sign up to, for a death wish today. You know why you're not ready to go out right now? Because it's not your time. If it's your time, you'd have grace. You'd know it's your time. Didn't Paul say the time of his departure was at hand? Most children of God, they get some kind of peace right before it's time to cross over. It's called grace. 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 And I've found that even when you got a loved one passes over, God gives you grace too to handle it. Hmm? What a blessing to know that. God's grace is amazing. Huh? You ever see a, a sign for one size fits all? That's a lie. Huh? You get something that's this big and it's supposed to fit something this big. You know? It ain't one size fits all. I don't care who you are. There's a difference between an adult small and an adult 5X. One size don't fit all. Hmm? Really, you don't. But can I say, God's grace does fit all. And it's a perfect fit for what you need. He, he's got it covered, friend. It's so amazing, His grace fits you just the way you need it to. But it also fits him, and it fits her, and it fits him. and it fits, It's exactly what you and I need. That's what's so amazing about it. It don't matter where you come from. don't matter 
uh, what status you are or symbol you are in life, don't matter which side of the tracks you was born on, don't matter how deep in sin, doesn't matter how, how uh, little in sin, doesn't matter anything, God's grace is exactly what you need for it to be. And only God can do that. Hmm? Let's teach my Sunday school class this morning. We're going through Ezra. And in chapter number 7, Ezra's got some... some uh, 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 companions with him that are in captivity and they've been given license from the king to go and rebuild Jerusalem and and uh, those companions are with him so we went through there and you know me I'm a big names buff and and we started uh, uh, you know revealing what their names meant and who got to leave and, and head the charge to go back to Jerusalem and build the city and then in chapter 8 you find some others that on the way, they lived out in the countryside. They weren't in the city, and they've been given leave to go too. And they meet up with them, and they go on to accomplish their job. And here's the thought I brought out of that. There's some that, that got started in this thing a long time ago. And then there's some that's been added to along the way. But God's grace has been there for everybody, and everybody gets, the, they're all going to the same place, get the same reward. Huh? And isn't it wonderful how God does that? That God in His sovereignty knows how to extend grace and how to extend the right grace for what you need to get in and then to get on down the way. We're all headed to the same place. And so I've said all to say this. Don't discount the grace of God in your life. See, when you're worried about anything going on in this world, you're discounting the grace of God. When you're concerned about tomorrow, you're discounting the grace of God. You know what? He didn't promise you tomorrow's grace today. He promised you today's grace for today. Live in today's grace. Let tomorrow take care of itself. And then when tomorrow comes, he'll have grace for tomorrow. Huh? Do not discount the privilege you have in being saved right now. Just live in the moment and appreciate the grace that you have right now. God's a good God. If you're all worried about anything else, you're discounting His grace. Appreciate the grace of God. Share the grace of God. And just abide in the grace of God. And there's no telling how much more effective you will be as a child of God. And too many people are trying to handle things that are out of their control. Just live in the grace of God. It'll be okay. It'll be all right. Appreciate the grace of God. Embrace the grace of God. And by all means, tell others about the grace of God. Why would people want what we've got when we're falling apart all the time? And friend, if you're falling apart, it's because you're discounting the grace of God. He can, he can sustain you. He sustained folks in a whole lot worse shape than you. Amen. Daniel in the lion's den. Three Hebrews in the fiery furnace. Children of Israel at the Red Sea. And we can go on and on and on. How about Peter being chained between two guards in a prison knowing the next day he's going to be beheaded and he's sitting there falling asleep. Say, so how do you know that? Because when the Lord sent the angel of the Lord down there, he had to wake him up. And he didn't fully awake till he got outside the prison. I mean, he was, he was sawing them off so much that the angel of the Lord got him out of there, and then he realized, hey, this isn't a dream. I'm really outside here. Huh? You say, why? How could he do that? It's called grace. He was at peace. That's why you raise them in church. They pay attention. Better than some adults. He had peace. He had the grace of God with him. You see, Peter in that prison cell is different than Peter warming by the devil's fire when he denied the Lord. It's different than Peter on that boat wondering, Master, do you care that we perish? And Peter, in between them two guards, realizes God's got it. It'll be a great day in your life when you realize God's got it. And just live in the grace of God. His God's amazing, friend. And it'll help you. Too many Christians... Don't live victoriously because you discount the grace of God. Don't discount it. Next time you get worried about something, just get over here and start reading about the grace of God. It'll help you. 
and it helped you down the road. My dear friends, grace saves us, grace teaches us, and grace gives us hope. It'll give you hope tonight. Let's all stand, brother. Ray, get a song of invitation. Maybe come sing Amazing Grace. That'd be good. Maybe you need to come pray and thank God for grace. Maybe you need to go to somebody and thank them for being gracious. Maybe you just need to come tell the Lord you love Him. Maybe you're here tonight and it's been a while since you thanked Him for saving you. Maybe you're here tonight and you're not saved. You ought to come get saved. So as folks are praying, he's picking out that song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for grace. Have your way now. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.